this program was pre-recorded on Blog Talk Radio over the internet. This is part two of The Anger of God. Psalm 78 verse 49. It says, He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger. Notice it's something being cast upon them. This is Revelation chapter 8. Let's just start with verse 1. It says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God. And to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, see here's another smoke. It's smoke of the incense of the prayers of the saints. Okay, well there's, there's two different smokes, okay? There's the smoke of the anger of the Lord burning stuff up. And then there's the smoke of the incense of the prayers before God. It says, and the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. Okay, here's fire being cast into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Okay, the first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth. Okay, and the result of this is what it says here. And the third part of trees was burnt up and all green grass was burnt up. Here is judgment coming down and it's as fire onto the earth. Okay, let's look. There's some more in uh, Revelation that talks about this. Verse 11 of Revelation chapter 13. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him. And causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So here they are worshiping the beast. Okay, and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. So here's judgment coming down. Okay, they're worshiping the beast and so judgment comes down and God allows him to pull this fire down because it's part of God's judgment. <clears throat> It says, and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. So he, this is actually the judgment of God. He is allowing them to be seduced because they rejected truth and wanted to serve the beast. And then the beast does all these signs and wonders in front of them. And they think that it's God when it's actually the judgment of God that has come upon them. It says, And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which hath a wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Okay, here is the them being consumed. Okay, Robert has fire comes out of the mouths of the two witnesses to consume those who speak against them. Okay, that fire is the judgment of God. It's the word of God that is spoke. That is the fire that consumes the enemies that speak against them. Just like in uh, Jeremiah, and let me find that scripture. Okay, Jeremiah 5 verse 14 says, Wherefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. Remember we talked about the kindling 
and the smoke and how how the anger of the Lord will burn. Well, his word is a fire. It says, I will make my words in thy mouth fire and this people wood and it shall devour them. Hopefully you can see as I'm reading these scriptures how the, how in the King James Bible all these pictures come together. Where if you use one of these other Bibles, you're not going to be able to draw this same picture out of it because it's gone. And actually, uh, one of the reasons these other Bibles were allowed to come into the church was because we turned our back on truth. We didn't want to seek him. We didn't want to dig into the scriptures and, and find and obey him like we're supposed to and allow the knowledge of God to come forth to us. And because of that, the enemy was allowed to come into the church and they changed the word. They changed the scriptures and it become another gospel, another Jesus. And, and it's another image. And it's actually the image of man, which is beast, which is our flesh. It's the whole battle is flesh against spirit. And the image of the beast is the image of man. We recreated God in our own image and that image now speaks because the spirit of the devil has has uh, given that image power to speak okay and that's why one of the reasons I uh, I will only use the King James Bible because I've seen the pictures mutilated in the other Bibles to such a degree that there's absolutely no way you can get the same picture Okay, Revelation 11, 5. Let's go to that one. Okay, it says, uh, And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. Just like the fire of God proceeds out of his mouth, he speaks his word and it devours. It says, Fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Okay. If we abide in the word, it provides life to us. But if we disobey it, death is an automatic result. And so you see the two ways you can go. You can either dwell within the fire like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did, or that fire will consume you in torture because you're still in sin. And so it's torment because you're still dwelling in sin. Okay, we were at uh, Revelation 13, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image. And that's why when, when people are using these other Bibles, these other Gospels that are other apostles and other prophets, the spirit that, that operates through that will actually speak to them. Just like the Spirit of God will speak to us through his truth, if we turn away from truth, the enemy will get a hold of us. It's another Jesus, and it can't be proven out to be truth because they've changed so much of it. It's just, it's mutilated, the actual picture of God by changing the words, and so the patterns are all gone. Okay, and actually those that, uh, if we continue in that, and God will lead us into all truth. If we really have a heart for God, he will bring us out of any of the lies of the enemy. And as we come away from that, God will reveal us more and more truth. And so when we have a heart to know him, he will reveal himself to us. And, and he'll take us away of all the lies. It's not just, you know, it's any sin that we do. It's uh, anything that we worship other than absolute pure truth. He wants to cleanse us and he will convict us. And that's what he did with me when my son come home one night and, and uh, told me to get out my Bible. And told me to turn to Acts 8, verse 37. And when I did, uh, well, I tried to. It wasn't there. And that conviction of the Lord hit me instantly when I saw that that verse was missing. And, and then I found out later what, what that verse actually said and how important that verse was. God showed me that, that that Bible was garbage. And in fact, while I'm talking about it, let's go ahead and, and take a look at it. And so you can see what I'm talking about in case you haven't been here before when I've talked about that. This is Acts 8, verse 36 we're going to go to. And I want to show you this is what got me out of uh, the bad Bibles to begin with or led me in that area. Verse 35 of Acts 8 says, Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached, preached unto him Jesus. This is Philip 
preaching to the eunuch about Jesus Christ, okay? Because God sent him to this eunuch because God saw the eunuch's heart was drawn toward God. Okay, verse 36 says, And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? He's actually asking what is going to hinder him from being baptized. Okay, he wants to know if there is something that he needs to do before he gets baptized. The Bible I had left the answer out. That entire scripture was gone. So the question did not get answered. What this should say is, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached Jesus unto him. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is what water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. It says, If thou believest with all thine heart, Thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Okay, so if that verse is gone, there is nothing to keep somebody from getting baptized. You can baptize babies. You can, you can go get baptized in your tub. You don't even have to believe anything. You just go get baptized. Okay, but if you have that verse, it says, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That is what was necessary before you get baptized. It's believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Anyways, it says, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Okay, if you don't have that verse in there, it will read like this. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. So there's no conditions to get baptized if that verse is gone. With that verse 37 gone, you no longer have to believe with all your heart because Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. Okay, you no longer have to do that if that verse is gone. All right, see, that's why it's so important. We have to believe. Babies don't believe. Babies, when they baptize babies, those babies don't believe with all their heart in Jesus Christ. They don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died for our sins. Okay, that is why this verse is so important. And most of the churches that use the Bible that I was in baptized babies. There's no conviction of it. But the fact of the matter is we need to believe with all our heart. Not only that, but any Bible that leaves that verse out does not answer the question. And yet they will say the best and newest manuscripts didn't have that verse. Well, I beg to differ. The best manuscripts would have answered the question. So if you have a manuscript that answers the question and one that doesn't, I'm going to choose the one that answers the question and that, that shows a difference between a uh, Satan worshiper being able to get baptized just because they have a whim and they want to get baptized. Okay? You need to believe in Jesus Christ. All right? And if you don't, you're not supposed to be getting baptized. Yeah, Robert says the eunuch may have had belief prior to meeting Philip, obviously. Otherwise, God would not have sent Peter to that eunuch to begin, or Philip to the eunuch to begin with. That is why God sent him there, because God saw he was seeking him, okay? And so he wanted him to have truth. And this is what God does with us. When he sees we want truth, he will lead us into all truth. And, and every time we get more truth, more and more of the things that we have believed that are not truth get washed away. That's where he looks at our hearts, okay? And then he draws us to him. And, and this is what God was doing with me. He was exposing something that I was hanging on to that I thought was truth when in fact it wasn't. And so 
after that day, when I saw that scripture missing, I started really digging into the different Bibles and that issue. In just about any of the studies that I do, if you do the exact same word studies in any other Bible, you can't get uh, the picture even close to the picture that I'm describing here today. You know, it's like with the fire and the wrath of God. If you use any other Bible in these scriptures that I'm using, you're not going to get the same picture. It's impossible. All right. Uh, we were talking about the, the image. Yeah, that's why we ended up getting into the Bibles. Because, because if you preach and the gospel of Jesus Christ is the image of God. If we preach another gospel, we're actually preaching from another image. Okay, if it's not the true image of God, if it's changed the picture, then it's another image. And it would be the image of man, the beast, instead of God. We are supposed to crucify our flesh. The flesh is the beast. It's it, The whole battle is between spirit and flesh. That's the, from the very beginning. It's between the desires of our flesh, just like in the Garden of Eden. The desires of their flesh succumbed them. It, it overtook them. They were willing to be seduced through their flesh. And that is why they sin. And it's believing the lies of the devil instead of the truth of God. Whether it's written or spoken to us, we have to believe his voice and his voice alone. Okay? Then we put away anything that doesn't agree with it. As God exposes these things to us, we put away the sins. All right, and it's and it's anything that doesn't line up with truth. We want to put those away. And as he reveals these things to us and we put them away, we become obedient to him and we reject the lies, okay? And every time we do that, we get washed a little bit more with truth. And as we obey him, he will give us more to obey and he will reveal more truth to us afterwards. And it's a it's a process over and over and over that God does this as he's leading us into all truth. The, we're supposed to study to show ourselves approved. So we don't want to just stick with just the King James Bible either. First off, we need to be able to hear God for ourselves and, and allow him to convict us when we're doing things that go against the truth of God. So God will show us things then we go out to prove uh, what we're actually supposed to be doing. Okay, CFGA says, I don't believe God speaks contrary to Scripture. Okay, exactly. There it is. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. If you have something that claims to be Scripture and it goes against what God is showing you, then that is not Scripture. It has, is an inspiration of something else. For example... Yo, people that, that are deep into yoga actually have their own scriptures. And they are called tantric scriptures. Okay? It's not just other Bibles, but there are actually things that are called tantric scriptures out there. That's why we've got to prove all things. And if, if it doesn't line up with what the Spirit of God is showing us, we need to discard it. And this is what God started showing me with these Bibles. And that's why, you know, when they started getting off, it's look at some of these Bibles. Look at the Mormons. They claim they have another gospel. Okay. Well, obviously it's not when you start digging in it, because it doesn't line up with what God teaches us. It's, it's completely off. And so we prove all things and hold fast that which is good. That is our responsibility. If. We turn away from the truth that God shows us. He will allow like the Book of Mormon and things like that to overtake us because we turn away from the truth and we will not be convicted by his voice. He allows the enemy to overtake us. There's the fire of the enemy that gets cast down to the earth. Okay, it's the enemy that will consume us because we did not have the love of the truth. And it's an automatic thing. Uh, anyways, Revelation 13, 12 says, And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, 
so that he maketh fire come down from heaven. Okay, I have seen ministers in churches lift their hand up and put their hand over, over someone and call for fire. They didn't speak the word. The word of God is supposed to be the fire. How come they didn't speak the word of God? Because they were not working for God in that way. They were not operating in truth. They were operating in another spirit. They were calling for fire, and all they had to do was speak the word of God, and the fire would have been there. The fire of God will devour them. The word of God is what devours. So all we have to do is speak the word. The word of God is what's supposed to be spoken because the word of God is what's going to prick our hearts. What kind of fire is this? Is this a strange fire in place of the fire of God? Is it, is it the judgment of God that has actually come upon these people because they rejected the love of the truth? I don't know, but God does. Okay, I'm just presenting to you evidence that the Bible actually shows that this is going to happen. Okay, it says in verse 13, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. That's what these preachers was doing, right in front of men. And those men would fall down to that fire. Okay, it says, And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. That's these signs and wonders. It is to seduce them from the truth. And they follow the signs and the wonders instead of following God. And what he's telling them, they're listening to this voice instead. It says, And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image. Okay, the ones that dwelled on the earth are the ones that made the image to the beast. It says that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Okay, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the image of God, according to the word of God. So if it's another gospel, it's going to be an image to the beast instead of the image of God. And it's going to contain the spirit of error instead of the spirit of truth, which error, according to 1 John chapter 4, is the spirit of Antichrist. If we err from the truth, it is the spirit of Antichrist. It's a replacement for Christ. Okay, anything that is not truth is a replacement for truth. Okay, it says, And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. They perish because they would not receive the love of the truth. There's that judgment that comes on them automatically. Okay, let me give you another example. <clears throat> in Moses' day, when he come down from the mount and he saw that they had worshipped this golden calf in the place of Jesus Christ, he ground that golden calf and he strewed it upon the waters and he made them drink of the waters. Okay? Did you know that in these churches where they are worshipping other Jesuses, Many times the judgment of God is coming upon them and they actually think it's a blessing of God. They will have gold dust that will fall upon them and angel feathers, they call them. A lot of times those feathers are actually black. Okay, now if that don't tell you that the judgment of God has fallen, I don't know what does. But the gold dust matches the judgment. Moses made them drink of the waters with the gold dust in it okay well we're, we're supposed to be drinking of the living waters the rain that falls from heaven well if something else has fallen from heaven it's actually the judgment of god and it's got the gold dust right in it along with it 
okay? And that is a testimony showing the pattern from the Old Testament where they actually worshiped that golden calf and Moses ground it up and made them drink of it. Well, we're supposed to be drinking from the living waters. Well, what they're drinking has that gold dust, physical gold dust in it, or they'll have, have uh, gems or whatever will show up in those meetings. And they're actually worshiping another God. And that is part of the condemnation that comes on them. And they think it's a blessing instead. Let's go back into Psalm 78, 49. Hopefully you're getting a little bit more picture of how, how when we reje reject God, this comes on us. All right. Psalm 78, 49 says, He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath. He cast it upon them, just like these angels cast down this fire to the earth. Okay? It's because of it. All right. It can either be the fire of God that that is convicting us and, and we repent and all that, or it can be the judgment of God that burns them up and torments them. Okay, it says, He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. He sends the evil angels among them. Notice how the angels get cast down from heaven. A third of the angels fall from heaven, and they're the ones that's following the dragon. With his tail, he drew a third of the angels. Well, this is the wrath of God that comes down to the earth. It is actually these evil angels that were following the devil. That is our punishment for our sins. That is the wrath of God that gets poured down upon us. Okay? It says he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger. Notice the word cast. That is a huge pattern within the word of God. It says, cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. Those evil angels bring forth the wrath of God. It, and, it's, and it actually dwells within them. These devils dwell within them because they turned away from God. And they're given over to these seducing spirits. Look at the fruits. Okay, if they deny the word of God, there's something wrong here. If the teachings that they teach go directly against the word of God, we need to be proving all things hold fast that which is good. Look at this Book of Mormon. You talk about another gospel. If that isn't another gospel, they actually claim it to be another gospel. And they got it from an angel. Okay, what? What does the word of God talk about if an angel bring any other gospel? Let's find out. Because Joseph Smith had an angel come and talk to him. Galatians 1 verse uh, 6 says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you unto the grace of Christ. Notice it's removed from him. Okay into the grace of Christ, unto another gospel. Okay, they were removed from God and went to another gospel instead. All right? And then it says, which is not another, but there will be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. So he would not tell us that the gospel of Christ would get perverted unless they were going to try to do it. Okay? He would not warn of something. You know, it's like warning us about being blotted out of the book of life. God's not going to warn us of something like that if it's not possible that this could happen. All right. But notice it says, which is not another, because the gospel of Christ is the image of God. So if it's another image, it's not actually another gospel. Just like if it's, if it's true scriptures, it was given by inspiration of God. If it was given by inspiration of another spirit, it's not true scriptures. So if it's a gospel, it's going to be truth. If it's scripture, it's going to be truth. God will show you this by saying, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. He will tell us that to just show us the picture. Okay, and he flat out tells you it's not a gospel. It's really not a gospel. They claim it to be a gospel, but it's not. Okay. 
says, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Then in verse 8, it talks about, and this is how the Book of Mormon actually come about. It says, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. If it is not the true gospel of Jesus Christ, the true image of God, and we're preaching from that thing, then we are going to have a curse come upon us automatically. Okay, just like the fierceness of God's wrath and indignation comes upon us by sending evil angels. Well, these evil angels are the spirit of error. And they get to lead us astray because we have rejected truth. Okay, so it, it all fits in. This Joseph Smith obviously did not want truth, but he was more than willing to allow this angel to, to give him another gospel in the place of Jesus Christ. And notice they have other apostles, other prophets, okay? In this church, they actually have all of these other things that the Bible tells us would come. Other apostles, other prophets, false teachers, Okay, and they seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. All right, that is the purpose. It's And God allows this to happen to see if we're going to stand on the truth or not. He will allow us to be seduced to try us whether our faith is, is real or not. Whether we really believe his voice or whether we believe the other voice. Just like in the Garden of Eden. They were seduced by the other voice. They chose who to put their faith in, by whose words they were going to believe. Okay, whether they're spoken to them or written down or whatever. You know, if we're going to believe truth, it's going to be whether it's being spoken to us or written down. It's still, it's either truth or it's a lie, one or the other. And so we have to prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Okay. All right, so obviously there was another gospel, and the result of following it instead of God is a curse, okay? So here's the wrath of God that's going to come down and will be consumed with those spirits of air because we rejected the love of the truth. And that's why it's so important to prove all things, okay? Ah, oh, praise God. Okay, so he sends evil angels among them. And those spirits will dwell within us instead of the Spirit of God. And they'll take us over. And they'll deceive us with these lying signs and wonders. And there will be miracles and they cause the image to speak. You know, you open up those books and, and those they talk to you right from there. There's a spirit in there. Just like the Spirit of God will talk to us through when we open up the Scriptures. The Spirit of God will speak to us. If it's false Scriptures, there's another spirit that's going to be speaking to us. But if we really have a love for God, he will reveal these things to us some way or somehow. You know, he could be doing it even today with somebody that's listening in the archives or, or that's listening to this program right now. Just showing you how the awesomeness of God's true word, the picture is complete within. And so he wants us to follow truth and nothing else. Okay, let's go to Psalm 78 verse 4. 50. He made a way to his anger. Okay. There's the way, the truth, and the life, which is Jesus Christ. Or there's another way, which is the crooked way, the broad way. So the broad way would be the way to his anger. All right. If you're following the broad way, you're going to end up with the anger of God as a result. Okay. It says he made a way to his anger. He spared not their soul from death. It's the spirit of death instead of the spirit of life. And that is the anger of God. And their soul will follow death all the way. It says, He spared not their soul from death, but gave their life over to the pestilence. All right. From here, we're going to go to Revelation chapter 22. And I want to show you the pestilence and why it comes upon us. Okay, Revelation chapter 22, verse 17, I think. Yeah, and the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. 
and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely there's waters of life and there's also waters of death and the bible tells about them okay verse 18 says for i testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book notice it's the prophecy of the book it is a book it says of this book if any man shall add unto these things and there's also scriptures in the book of the law that say almost identically the same thing as here i'm not sure i think they're in deuteronomy where it talks about adding and taking away from the word okay it says for i testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book if any man shall add unto these things okay think about the book of mormon for example okay they added to the book all right and they claimed another gospel another jesus other prophets it says if any man notice it's man shall add unto these things and that's the things that are written in the book okay it says god shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book okay just like this other said spared not their soul from death but gave their life over to the pestilence okay they're given over those plagues come upon us when we reject any of the truth the plagues are going to come upon us automatically okay it says god shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book okay if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy again it's a book god shall take away his part out of the book of life so the book of life is also a book it says and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book that's how our name get, gets blotted out of the book of life because if we're in the word if we're abiding in the truth and the truth is in us if we reject the truth we're no longer in the book we're no longer abiding in the truth and our names are blotted out of it we're not there anymore okay we're actually in the other instead we're in the lie instead of the truth all right our names are either in one or the other it's either in the book of life or in death okay depending on whose voice we're following and the wrath of god comes upon those that reject truth that's why we need to prove all things and hold fast that which is good okay all right so that shows a little bit of that all right psalm 78 50 says he made a way to his anger now that's the the broad way Okay. It says, he spared not their soul from death. He didn't spare them. Okay. He allowed death to overtake them because they wanted to go the other way instead of the way to truth. Okay. They wanted to dwell within sin, so he let sin overtake them. And sin leads to death. Okay. It says, spared not their soul from death, but gave their life over to the pestilence. It's automatic. We reject truth. The pestilence is going to come upon us. Just like the plagues get poured out in the end. Uh, in the book of Revelation, it talks about it. Okay. Uh, Psalm 78 verse 58 says, For they provoked him to anger with their high places. Okay. Things that they're lifting up in place of the truth of God with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images it's another image okay it's not the gospel of jesus christ which is the image of god but it's another image instead and god is moved to jealousy because of it okay and the result of that will be the wrath of god will get poured out on us okay isaiah 1 verse 1 is the next one we're going to go to Isaiah 1, verse 1. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. Okay, so when he's speaking, he's talking not only to the earth, but he's also talking to the heavens. He says, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. 
It says, I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. We need to think about these things when we've been drawn away to something that's not of God. We need to be proving all things, holding fast that which is good. We need to consider it in our hearts so that we will only follow truth. It says, The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity. They're laden with this. It's just consuming them. A seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They corrupt us from the true way of God. Instead of following him, they corrupt their way. Okay, it says children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. And that's what we do when we turn away from God. We provoke him to anger. It says they are gone away backward. They fall away from him. They are gone away backward. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. So, so he's showing that he's striking them to get them to repent and turn back to him. It's God is chastening those that he loves, trying to get us to turn back to him with our whole hearts. It says, why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint because they're following another head other than him. And that's why it's sick. Because if they were following Jesus Christ, he would never say the whole head is sick. Because if they're following truth, it is holiness. And it's not sick. It says, and the whole heart faint. If the words that are written in our hearts are God's words, we have his strength. Okay? It says, from the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. This is when God looks at the body that is supposed to be the body of Jesus Christ and they are following lies instead of truth. They actually, this body is full of, of it has no soundness, but it's actually full of wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. In God's eyes, that's what we look like when we're following the lies of the devil instead of the truth of God. We're full of wounds, bruises, and putrefying sores. It says they have not been closed. Okay, well, by his stripes we are healed. All right? If we believe in all of the word of God, because the word was manifested in the flesh and dwelt among us, we have to believe in all of it. If we reject any of the word of God, it is a wound that's within us. It's ill, it's sick, because we don't have his stripes healing us. The picture on the cross, what the Lord has shown me, they took away parts of his flesh. When they claim another gospel that has removed part of the truth, again, spiritually, they have taken away part of his flesh. That is the picture, okay? When we get all of him back, all of the truth back and we start to see him the way he is with his stripes we are healed when when that is put back into the body that flesh that was missing the truth that was missing we're healed the wounds disappear because the word of god heals us the knowledge of the truth will heal us that's why within the word of god is the keys to hell and death Jesus took back those keys, and he made them available, but it's only in the truth. The keys are gone from the Gospels that are not of him. All of those keys, those patterns are gone. But if you have the truth, and you're standing on the rock-solid truth, the keys to hell and death are also within. The picture's there so you can see what we are doing that goes against God so that we could follow him all the way and not follow air okay and so when pieces of scriptures are missing 
It's a wound to his flesh. It's a pattern that follows along with what happened to him on the cross. Parts of his flesh was stripped away. Parts of the scriptures are missing. It's like that Acts 8 verse 37, that verse that's missing. That would be a stripe that was put on him. When we add to the word, look at the Amplified Bible, for example. Look at all the things that they have added to the word of God, to the scriptures. They have added in other words. That would be like a welt put on his back. They added to his flesh. His flesh swelled up. So this is a picture of spiritually speaking of what happened on the cross they're doing it again by taking away from the written word it's that picture all over again they're stripping him of pieces of his flesh by taking away part of the gospel if the gospel of Jesus Christ is the image of God and parts of his flesh have been removed because the word was made flesh and dwelt among us so if part of the flesh has been removed part of the scriptures is gone Part of the gospel is gone. Pieces of his flesh have been removed. And so now it's another image and it's another gospel instead of the true image of God. And if we don't have the true image of God, we won't be healed because it's with his stripes we are healed. When we see all of it, that's when the healing comes. It's seeing the truth for what the truth really is. Then we are healed of those wounds. It says, from the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. In uh, Proverbs, the words of a talebearer are as wounds. If you use one of these other Bibles, they'll say that the words of a talebearer are like tasty trifles or some other garbage like that. No. This picture right here is it's a wound. If you're telling a lie, it wounds the body of Jesus Christ. And it was a wound on that cross. When his word is denied, we have stripped him again of his flesh. Whether it's in the physical or in the spiritual, it's the same picture. It's the same image. And we've done it again every time we deny the word. We literally strip him of a piece of his flesh. And when we add to the word, we actually add to the, to the wounds that was on that cross, the swelling of his flesh. When we add to the word, we actually made a welt on him where his flesh expanded because of the damage that was done to that flesh. When we add to the word of God, that's a picture of what happened on the cross. It's the same thing all over again. But you will never get this picture if you use any other Bible. Any of these new Bible versions, you can't get this picture out of them because it's gone. It's just like this pattern of the wound. Words of a talebearer are as wounds. But yet, the New King James will call it tasty trifles. And these other Bibles, many of them will call it tasty trifles or something similar. No, the words, it's the words of a liar cause wounds. It strips us of the truth of Jesus Christ. It wounds the body of Jesus Christ. If we're part of the body and that has taken place, those lies are causing wounds to us. It's causing damage to the body of Jesus Christ. And we don't want that. That's why we need the truth so that we can be healed. When we have the truth, it fills in. If you have a big gash in your body and the truth comes in, it'll fill that gash back in. That flesh is replaced. So it's with his stripes we are healed. The, the body gets put back together. The truth is all there again. And the healing takes place in us. Okay? That's why he suffered. It's because he knew every single thing that we would ever do. Every time we deny the word, he knew ahead of time that we would do it. And every lie causes a wound into the body of Christ. It's not a tasty trifle. It's a wound. The devil wants us to think that it's tasty when it's actually causing damage. It says, from the sole of the foot, even notice the sole of the foot. We're supposed to be standing on the word of God. The body of Jesus Christ is supposed to be built on the foundation of the word of God, on that solid rock, not sand. What, the, what we have done for the most part, is build on pieces of the rock. 
we built our house on sand instead of that solid rock. And our house is going to fall because of it. We take a scripture here and a scripture there. And we base our whole doctrine on a couple scriptures instead of basing it on all of the word of God. And when we do that, our house is going to fall because all we've built on is pieces. We haven't built on that solid rock. It's from the sole of the foot because our feet are supposed to be shod with the gospel of peace. And so if from the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there's no soundness in it, it's because the foundation isn't right. They built upon another foundation, another gospel, another Jesus, pieces of him instead of truth, or they've added to him. It says, from the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. It's the fire of the enemy that takes us because it's the wrath of God, because we rejected truth. So our cities, we're supposed to be dwelling in the city of Jerusalem. We're supposed to be part of that city. But instead, we're burned with fire in our land. It says, are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it. It's not the spirit of truth, the spirit of God. It's strangers. It's that spirit of error, those devils that were sent down to us because we rejected the love of the truth. All right. Let's see. Where was I? Okay. Your country is desolate. Okay. It's the abomination that causes desolation. It's another spirit dwelling within us instead of God. If you're a watered garden, you have the truth flowing through you. If you're desolate, you don't have the living waters flowing through. And so it shows us your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it. We're supposed to be swallowed up with immortality, but instead we're swallowed up of death. And it devours us. It's the wrath of God that comes upon us because we reject the love of the truth. It says, your land, strangers devour it in your presence. In your presence. They're doing it right there. We're watching it happen. We don't even realize it. It says, strangers devour it in your presence. And as it is desolate, as overthrown by strangers, because the enemy overthrows us. He's not a friend of God. He's a stranger. Okay, and the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Notice the words besieged. It's because the enemy has taken it over. Okay, except the Lord of hosts hath left, had left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Notice Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, they were burned up with fire. But God, even in Sodom and Gomorrah, there was one righteous man. And he brought him out and his family before he consumed Sodom and Gomorrah in the wrath of God. It says, hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. If we're following lies, we're just like Sodom and Gomorrah to God. Verse 15, and when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. If we're going to pray to God and we're walking in sin, he's not going to hear those prayers. There's no way. It says right here, voice you, make you clean. That's, that is repenting of our sins. That's when he'll hear, when we turn away from the sins and turn back to him. It says, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. We allow the truth to wash us clean, to convict us and get us away from that garbage that we've been following that doesn't line up with him. It says, wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. It's learning process. We learn to follow him as he draws us to him. It says, learn to do well. Seek judgment. Seek judgment. When we seek the truth, we are seeking the judgment of God. It says, relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. 
Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow, because he'll wash us of those sins if we just listen to him and obey him. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, if we're not obeying his every commandment, the enemy is going to consume us instead. Because disobedience is rebellion, and rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. It says, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. If we follow him, his way, he will feed us. He will come and sup with us. He will open that door. He will sup with us. It says, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord had spoken it. 